What we do if we don't know the variance of the underlying population whose mean we're trying to estimate? Well, it's a lot like what we did for confidence intervals. We first have to estimate the variance, and we do so with the sample variance. We estimate the standard deviation with the sample standard deviation. And then when we build the standardization, the sample mean minus the population mean divided by the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of the population size, well, this quantity will not follow a standard normal distribution. It will follow instead a student's t distribution with n minus one degrees of freedom. And everything else is done in exactly the same manner. You just replace all of your z's by t's and your critical values, my alpha values or alpha divided by two values of the student t distribution with n minus one degrees of freedom. So if you test for the null hypothesis that mu is equal to mu naught against the alternative hypothesis that mu is greater than mu naught, for instance, the critical region would be t naught being greater than the critical value t alpha n minus one, where t naught is the observed value of this quantity here, the observed sample mean minus the candidate for the true population mean divided by the observed sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n, t alpha n minus one, that's the t value that satisfies that the probability of your student t distribution being greater than this value is equal to alpha, assuming that t follows a student t distribution with n minus one degrees of freedom. The p values that you compute, you're not computing them from the standard normal distribution, you're computing them from the corresponding t distribution, again with n minus one degrees of freedom. So if you know how to do it when you know the variance, you also know how to do it when you don't know the variance, you just need to make the substitutions. All the z's become t's. As an example, we have a number of observations. They come from a normal population, but we don't know the mean, nor do we know the variance of this population. We are gonna to try to estimate the mean. Um, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, sixteen 16 observations in total. And what I want you to do is to test for the null hypothesis that the true population mean is 16.6, right? That all of these Xi's come from a distribution that looks like this against the alternative that Actually, the true population mean is greater than 16.6, and we'll do the test at a 5% significance level. So we know what the sample size is, it's 16. Sample mean and the sample variance, well, you can actually compute them using R or you know, do them by hand. The sample mean is 17.4. The sample standard deviation is 1.078. So the sample variance would be the square of that. Your observed sample test statistic, in this case, would be the sample mean minus the candidate for the population mean divided by the observed sample standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So 17.4 minus 16.6 .6 divided by 1.078 divided by four. And work it out, you get about 2.968. So the p-value that is of interest to you is the probability that the sample mean would be greater than 17.4, which translates into the probability that your t-statistic would be greater than 2.968, right? Because if x-bar is greater than 17.4, then you can say that x-bar minus mu zero divided by s over the square root of n should be greater than or equal to 17.4 minus mu zero divided by the observed sample standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. And here we know what these values are. Mu zero is 16.6, n is 16, and s is 1.0. I forget the exact value, but we had it on the previous slide. And this thing here is equal to t, that's the T statistic for the test and this quantity here is 2.968. Now when you compute these you're of course assuming that you're looking at the T 
distribution, the student distribution, and that distribution would have n minus one degrees of freedom, 15 degrees of freedom. So you have to go look in the t tables and you will find that for nu equals 15, for 15 degrees of freedom, the probability that it is greater than or equal to 2.947, not quite 2.968, but 2.968 isn't one of the values in the table. 2.947 gives us probability here of about 0.5%. And the next value for which we have information is 3.286, which gives us the probability and p-value of about um, 0.25%. So the corresponding p-value would be somewhere between these endpoints. I don't know where exactly, but what I do know is that if it's in this interval, it is definitely smaller than 5%. And this provides some very strong evidence against the null hypothesis, that the true population mean is equal to 16.6. .6. And so you would reject at the 5% level the null hypothesis that the true population mean is 16.6 .6 in favor of the alternative hypothesis that the true population mean is greater than 16.6. .6. If you're using R and some other statistical software, you can get the true p-value here. You can compute the probability for the t-distribution at the exact threshold of interest to you. But if you're looking at the tables, you only have access to the pre-tabulated value. So you need to find where this quantity here falls with respect to the quantities that have been pre-tabulated.